Okay. Oop, nice to see you all. Okay. So I'm just going to collect myself for one second. Obviously, I'm used to seeing the llama on the other end of this. And that's a big seat to sit down on. <laughs> so I won't even try to fill it. I'll just do my own thing. <laughs> so some of the things we've been sort of talking about teaching, there's a, a group of us that are training to, to, to transmit Zochen to keep, keep it going with Lama. Um, and uh, devotion is, is one that uh, keep, keeps coming up of, of one of the things that is good for us to teach upon, refuge being another one. And then, of course, compassion, right? And so, I didn't really know this when I when we started talking about that that devotion was going to be such an important one to me necessarily. Um, but as I've continued to practice, I've found devotion to be. really the I'd say the for lack of a better analogy the straw that stirs the drink <laughs> for me and everyone's a bit different of course but devotion and, and sort of what that means I don't know let's say religiously I'll do the religiously with air quotes um, has was very difficult for me in my adult life actually it's been difficult for me in my whole life so i grew up in a very strict seventh day adventist uh protestant household if anyone knows what what that religion is or entails my mom is very devout still very devout god bless her she's amazing um but she's uh not but she is uh, uh, these days, uh, an older Jamaican lady from the bush in the middle of the island of Jamaica, and they have a very specific kind of Adventism in there. It's of course. So when I first started coming, and sort of, I, I guess when when Lama and the Sangha found me, let's say. Um, there was a lot of chanting and, there, and, and, um, mantras and things. And I had a kind of a tough time at the beginning, like understanding it, wanting to really do it, feeling anything necessarily for it. Um, because to me, I'd sort of done, been there, done that. I've come up through sort of this, you know, this, uh, religion where, Definitely, there was some beautiful devotional aspects of it to, you know, to the guru of that religion, Jesus. But there was, it was fraught for me, right? It's fraught with a lot of different aspects. And I think modern, let's just say modern society, I think devotion is a fraught <laughs> subject in, a, in an odd way as well. I mean, we talk about um devotion to others right we have a very sort of hard time with that it, it feels like in uh um in in the west you know maybe outside of devotion to our children or our job right <laughs> or something like that um so what is this devotion to you know these this what are these like gods what are all these gods of these buddhist gods and all these you know how, why am I supposed to be devoted to, I'm going back to myself, I don't know, seven, 
and years ago, whenever that was, I don't remember anymore. Um, why should I be devoted to Papa Sambhava? Who, who's that? <laughs> right? How would how why, how would I muster devotion for such a person? <laughs> Some far off land doesn't really look like me. What what is that about? And of course, is for whatever reason, I don't really have a reason for it. I just kept going through the motions. I kept singing the songs. I got through some of the initial issues with it. Didn't really know why, I just, but I just kept doing it. Um, and as my, pra my practice has this idea of devotion has progressed. Right, because devotion is not really an intellectual exercise. Right, devotion is beyond that. Right, I was actually, <clears throat> you know, I have a, a, a golden retriever, two years old. His name is Bodhi. Right, he doesn't need to intellectualize, nor do I need to intellectualize and say, hmm, is this dog devoted to me when he's sitting there tracking my movements and walking with me <laughs> and and sitting with me all the time and 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 longing for me and being with me right i don't question that and i guarantee you bodhi which is his name doesn't question that doesn't sit there and and wonder about intellectually hmm so maybe if i check a couple more boxes or if i do this exactly right i'll be devoted more right it doesn't quite work that way and yesterday when we took we took uh the family irene and i my my wife who i'm very devoted to she's devoted to me too there's another we'll talk about that another time we went to the this greek festival in new york um and many people came around and my dog was there. We, we took Bodhi with us and I was questioning this, but we took Bodhi with us. And then all of a sudden, all these people were like, oh, Bodhi, this dog is so cute. And we pet the dog. Everyone's like, and then I turn, I look up and I'm like, all these people had surrounded us. And Bodhi sort of freaked out. He's a big golden retriever, like a hundred pounds. And he started, he got really low and like, just started like darting all over the place. I'm like, oh, okay, I got to get this guy out of here. Not once did I wonder, hmm, am I doing the right thing? Am I devoted to the dog? Do I, do I love this dog? You know, maybe if I do this with it, no, I got him out of there, right? I'm, I'm devoted to his well being. And devotion leads us to do things, right? So, this idea of devotion is is complicated and i think it becomes quite complicated when we intellectualize about it as pretty much everything does right that's part of part of the practice of the dharma and especially in 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 zochen right in chekshid practice is not intellectualizing about things and allowing and I found devotion to be the same. So what started happening is for me, I was going through the motions a lot with this and I, you know, had little pockets of sort of, of, of sort of the feeling of, of what is meant to come from this devotion to the guru, right? Um, we could talk about what that, what that means a bit. Um, devotion to the three jewels, right? Devotion to practice. Because, the, like I said, these are these are the this is the straw that stirs the drink. When you're devoted to something, you practice it. You do it. You 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 want to do it. Whatever that may be. So I started being a musician as I am, I started just picking up my guitar and 
doing the the practice the you know our some of our chants and mantras just with the guitar because again growing up in a few different things but in sort of the religion that i grew up in a big part of going to church or 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 practicing that religion is singing especially in you know uh, jamaican settings and black church settings and in in white church settings but it's a little bit different so integrating the two or three or infinite sort of aspects of self into sort of like how can i even pull more sort of devotion into into the practice and it just sort of started happening naturally so <clears throat> I just started playing in my daily practice. And in some ways, devoting or I don't know, not performing, but practicing for the guru, for the guru or gurus, the invisible array, which is, of course, our inner self, our true self, right? Guru is not this external phenomenon as we sort of often take it to be right the guru is pointing to the deepest part of ourselves which we all are so the devotion to the guru is actually truly devotion to awakening it's devotion to our deepest self it's not an external being it's not an array of characters that were put together however many hundreds or thousands of years ago so it's, it's our practice for ourselves through the mechanism of devotion to what we would call other. So I was gonna, going to do with a, a, a seven line supplication to Padmasambhava, which I'm sure many of you have, uh, have witnessed or, or chanted, and the Vajra Guru Mantra. I'm just going to do it the way I often do it. Oh. 
Ascension beings without exception. I shall practice the six perfection wholeheartedly day and night. Ascension beings are numberless. To liberate them. Delusions are inexhaustible. We vow to transcend them. Dharma teachings are boundless. We vow to realize them. Buddha's in line ways unsurpassable. We vow to embody it. We vow to embody it. We vow. To embody Now, all the work is done. Now we just sit, nothing left to do but remain in the view. We've made the call, made the call to our higher selves. Let go, let the Buddha do it. Three natural is just sitting. Natural body. Body like a mountain. Solid. Imperturbable. It just sitting. Mountain doesn't try and sit like a mountain. It just is a mountain. Just breathing. Mm. 
not trying to breathe in any special way. It's just breathing. The ocean's waves responding to what is necessary, what is happening. Ocean doesn't wave because it feels like it or it's bored. It's responding to all the causes and conditions that create the wave. Just as our breath naturally responsive. If we, what we think of as we, was in charge of our breath, believe me, we would probably not be breathing right now. Because we would be late. Or early. Or a body, natural body, breath, natural breath and energy. Always in the present moment. Our body is always in the present moment. Where else could it be? It's here. Mind, natural heart, mind, just being, just present, aware. Just aware of flows through mind. And then just letting go. Oh, as Lama always says, to let go, you must let come and go. Just being aware. Another little secret awareness is always in the present moment. Can't be anywhere else. Our thoughts may be another moment to be in the present moment. Nothing more to do. There's 
What's done is what had to be done. Everything open and relaxed. Body relaxed. Open. Release all tension. Eyes open. Heart open. Just allowing just don't know for a second could be liberating just don't know
Let it come and go. Just don't know.
path fulfilling. <clears throat> no soon three times, blissful presence, a source of all spiritual accomplishments. Fierce destroyer of illusion and dispels every obstruction. We pray to you for blessing, inspiration, and realization. Please remove all outer, inner, and secret obstacles and spontaneously fulfill our aspirations. <laughs> Joachi Kang Malu Pa De Salago Pa Jo. To this virtue may we swiftly realize and fully embody the natural great perfection, and thereby bring all without exception to his complete realization. Sepak me gun guru pema so grab jam se la gyatsu tu junji kunzag ten zin ne mesen chenji zappe ten zin ne jin rap gisho. And bow to the Buddha in your seat. Don't overlook them. Thank you, Pete. So, thank you.
that's a practice that I do like every day. So I don't do do any questions or anything, Kelly, or anything. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you, Pete. That was beautiful. Um, thank you for sharing that with us. Sure. Any questions? Please, uh, feel free to directly message me. Um, uh, sweet comments, Pete. Beautiful, very soothing, awesome. Thank you, Pete. Awesome, so beautiful. Like, uh, rocking it. Yeah. <laughs> There's uh, so all that goes through, you know, it goes through a sort of prescribed sequence of things, right? So we're sort of generating, right? We're paying homage, sort of generating <clears throat> devotion, right? Then we're taking refuge in the, in the three jewels, right? The Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. Of course, we can use these in all, all sort of different ways, conceptually, we can, we can think about that. And then we sort of generated aspirations in bodhicitta, right? Like for all beings, right? So that's sort of the sequence of, of events. So we're trying to arouse bodhicitta, sort of bringing the, the sort of array of past masters, inner masters all together. We we draw them to us, we take refuge in all of that. And then we tell them how we aspire to love all beings. Right, and we bring that into our, our hearts, then we sit. And then we were doing there was a trek should essentially sitting remaining in the view, sitting in the view, just being sitting Buddha, right? Um, that's in like in Zazen, say sitting Zazen is sitting Buddha, right? Just sitting is sitting as the Buddha. So in that sequence of events, there's nothing we have to do, right? We've called, we just let it go. We let our inner, our inner purity, our Buddha and within do the work at that point. So anything that comes in that we feel like we're extraneously adding or trying to subtract or hold off is just let it go. So I've done that with many different ways. I'm just going through what we what we just did so that we kind of understand. So it's just, you know, I label it just thinking, just whatever kind of like you can label things sort of just this and then just let them go without having to expand upon them. Right? Because we can obviously create the story. It's like, oh, just back pain. Oh, well, where'd that back pain come? Oh, I, sh I was raking the leaves. And then, oh, remember when I got that phone call, I was raking the leaves and this person did, you know, we know where it goes from there, right? So it's just like at that point in Trek should, like we're sitting as the Buddha, there's nothing to do, nothing to do but remain in the view. And then we did uh, a, a path for a path clearing, which I feel like is very useful Sorry. at these times uh, to Papa Sambhava to just say, okay, we've sat, please remove any obstacles. And then we did a dedication to, uh, to dedicate the practice, because that's a big, a big part is to dedicate the practice to all sentient beings. And then uh, I did a long life prayer for Lama Suryadas at the end, which we didn't translate, just did the, the, the Tibetan. So that was what we did. And then we rang some gongs. <laughs> um, so that, that uh, Menla, I don't know if you have any other quick announcements. Yes, when, thank you again, Pete, so much. Um, the important announcement coming up is next week's one-day retreat on Saturday from 9 to 4. The registration is in the chat. And, um, you know, practice is time we have a retreat. There's no, there's no town hall the following day. So there will be no town hall on June 12th. And we hope to see you all on June 11th 
where we can take this practice even deeper. These one day retreats are really cool. You can drop in and be in this beautiful container and drop back out and kind of get back to your life at the same time. So um, I think it's been a gift of the pandemic that we do these. So thank you, Pete, again, for that beautiful devotional practice. I know I felt it from your heart to mine and it seems as if many, many others did as well. So thank you. Hope to see you all Saturday.